la 8812th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute on behalf of the Council to His Excellency Mr. Sven Jurgensen, Permanent Representative of Estonia, for his service as President of Council for the month of June. I am sure I speak for all members of the Council in expressing our deep appreciation to Ambassador Jurgensen and his team for the great diplomatic skill with which they conducted the Council's business last month. The provisional agenda for this meeting is Peace and Security in Africa. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representative of Ethiopia to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I inv invite the following briefers to participate in this meeting. Ms Rosemary De Carlo, Under Secretary General for Political and Peace Building Affairs. Mr Ramesh Rajasingham, Acting Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I now give the floor to Ms Rosemary De Carlo. Thank you. Mr President, Ethiopia is at a critical juncture. Recent developments demonstrate the need to address issues plaguing the country in a comprehensive and sustainable way. The consequences of not doing so could be disastrous. After almost eight months of conflict, the federal government of Ethiopia announced on 28 June a unilateral ceasefire in Tigray, citing the need to address the humanitarian crisis in the region. Subsequent to the announcement, the Ethiopian National Defense Force and the Provisional Tigray Administration withdrew from Tigray's capital, Mekele. On 27-28 June, the Tigray Defense Force entered major towns and cities of Tigray, including Adwa, Aksum, Shire, and Humera. The TDF are now in Mekele. The situation in Mekele is reportedly calm, and the TDF appear to be in control of the city. Reports indicate that leaders of the previous Tigray regional administration, including its former president, have returned to Mekele. As of today, the TDF has yet to agree to a ceasefire. While there have been no reports of serious incidents, basic services to support humanitarian delivery are absent. Michele has no electrical power or internet. Key infrastructure has been destroyed, and there are no flights entering or leaving the area. Elsewhere in Tigray, the Eritrean Defense Force has withdrawn to areas adjacent to the border, while in the west of Tigray, the Amhara Regional Force remains in place despite advances by the TDF. On 29 June, the Amhara branch of the ruling Prosperity Party issued a statement warning that Amhara regional forces would oppose any attempts by the TDF to take the territory in western Tigray, which was seized during the conflict. In short, there is potential for more confrontations and a swift deterioration in the security situation, which is extremely concerning. The ceasefire announcement provides an opportunity that all parties to the conflict, including the TPLF, must seize and build upon. In this regard, we urge the TDF to endorse the ceasefire immediately and completely. As the Under Secretary General for as the Acting Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Relief Coordinator will outline, our immediate concern is focused on those in urgent need of assistance in Tigray. Food insecurity has only continued to worsen in recent days. We must scale up the response. 
all parties must ensure the safe package passage of humanitarian workers for the continued delivery of supplies. The destruction of the Dikeze Bridge on 1 July effectively cut off central Tigray from western Tigray, closing a vital artery for humanitarian assistance. A ceasefire observed by all parties would not only facilitate the provision of humanitarian aid, but would also be a starting point for the necessary political efforts to chart a way out of the crisis. The conflict in Tigray is a result of deep-rooted political grievances that can only be resolved through dialogue and a credible political process. This morning, in a briefing to the diplomatic corps in Addis Ababa, the deputy prime minister and foreign minister said that once the election results were announced and a new government formed, the government would take steps to hold an all-inclusive dialogue process. This is a welcome development. Such a process could be part of a broader effort to address the country's structural challenges, encourage reconciliation, and foster consensus on the way forward for Ethiopia's transition. Mr. President, once again, and predictably, civilians have paid the heaviest price in an armed conflict. An estimated 1.7 million people have been displaced, with more than 60,000 refugees crossing into Sudan. I call on the parties to place paramount concern on the protection and well-being of civilians. That requires strict respect for international humanitarian law and human rights law. I also call on the parties to offer all necessary assistance to the ongoing joint investigation of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. There must be accountability for the grievous human rights violations committed during the conflict, including acts of sexual violence against children and adult and mass killings. This morning, the federal government of Ethiopia reiterated its commitment to the joint investigation and to accountability. We look forward to seeing the concrete results of that undertaking. Further, Ethiopia's neighbors can play a constructive role in supporting the country's transition while respecting its sovereignty. The withdrawal of Eritrean forces from Tigray must be fully implemented. Mr. President, the 2018 rapprochement between Ethiopia and Eritrea and the reforms introduced by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed raised hopes for a new era of stability and peace in the Horn of Africa. The wide-ranging transition has proven to be both challenging and hopeful. It has brought to the fore disagreements around fundamental issues such as the federal structure of the state and the role and status of ethnicity, as well as how such disputes should be addressed. The recent national elections were an important milestone in this regard. They were, by many accounts, an improvement on previous polls in the country and were held in a generally peaceful manner. They were, however, affected by insecurity and technical problems. Some opposition groups did not participate. It is my hope that the electoral process can be concluded in a peaceful and secure environment and that any disputes are addressed in accordance with the laws and constitution of Ethiopia. But elections are just one part of the democratic process. I urge the federal government to deepen efforts to open the political space and facilitate the meaningful participation in public life for all Ethiopians, including women, youth, and civil society. Many of the political parties who chose not to participate in the recent polls cited the need for something more than the ballot box to heal the deep divisions in Ethiopia's body politic and society. Many asked for a national dialogue as a space or platform where Ethiopians could reflect about reconciling the many competing visions of the future of the country's political system. In its recent ceasefire announcement, the government stated, referring to the elections, and I quote, Ethiopians from all walks of life have sent a strong signal they are ready to work together to build a stronger, united, and democratic Ethiopia, removing the seeds of discord and division sown within the Ethiopian body politic, end quote. 
I encourage the government to follow through on today's announcement and harness these sentiments. In this regard, I offer the full expertise and support of the United Nations, including assistance to domestically driven, inclusive, and comprehensive mediation and dialogue processes. We hope that such a dialogue would include discussions at the federal member state level, encouraging as many sectors of the population as possible to have an input into consolidation of the reform process and the future of the country. The promise of the Ethiopian transition remains real and can be fulfilled with the necessary political will. Peace and stability in the country, the cornerstone of the Horn region, may well depend on it. Mr. President, allow me to offer some areas of concerted international support to Ethiopia as it transverses the current crisis. The international community must continue to call for a permanent ceasefire to be honored by all parties. We should urge Ethiopia's leaders to work swiftly to restore national unity through a process of inclusive dialogue and reconciliation. Again, the government's recent indication of its intent to do so is positive. As delivery of humanitarian services to those who have suffered this tragic conflict is vital, I urge member states to generously support these efforts. And finally, the federal government of Ethiopia has committed to not allow impunity as this would severely harm the cause of justice and sustainable peace. This is an important commitment to ensure accountability for crimes and atrocities committed during this conflict. The international community must encourage the government and the TDF to live up to that commitment. The United Nations will continue to stand alongside Ethiopia. We are ready to extend all the means of su support at our disposal to help put the country back on track. Thank you, Mr. President. Je remet... I thank Ms. De Carlo for her briefing. I now give the floor to Mr. Ramesh Rajasingham. Mr. President, uh, thank you. Just over two weeks ago, on the 15th of June, uh, we briefed the Council on Famine in Tigray with over 350,000 people in, in catastrophe conditions, uh, the worst famine situation we have seen in decades. In the short space of time since then, the situation has worsened dramatically. Uh, you have just heard from Under Secretary General Di Carlo about the political and security dynamics in Tigray and Ethiopia. Uh, what I would like to speak about is the humanitarian situation. This, I'm afraid, is more alarming than when you were briefed two and a half weeks ago. Two million people are still displaced and close to 5.2 million people still require humanitarian assistance, the great majority of them women and children. One of the most distressing trends is an alarming rise in food insecurity and hunger due to conflict. More than 400,000 people are estimated to have crossed the threshold into famine and another 1.8 million people are on the brink of famine. Some are suggesting that the numbers are even higher. 33,000 children are severely malnourished, and moreover, the food insecurity crisis will continue to worsen during the impending rainy season, as food supplies are exhausted and the risk of flooding and waterborne diseases, including cholera, increases. Considering where we already are, this means that more people will die, certainly, if we do not reach them with humanitarian assistance. Let me also emphasize that what we are seeing in Tigray is a protection crisis. On 22 June, an airstrike on a busy market in Togoga killed and injured dozens of civilians. This is just one of many times when civilians have been killed in the eight months of conflict in Tigray. As has been widely reported by senior UN officials, civil society, and others, uh, we have multiple credible and widely corroborated cases of serious sexual and gender-based violence. More than 1,200 cases have been reported, with more continuing to emerge. This is likely, we fear, only a fraction of the actual cases, as stigma, shame, fear of reprisals, as well as a lack of health and psychosocial services leading to underreporting. All parties to the conflict must respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. Attacks directed against civilians and indiscriminate attacks are prohibited. Allegations of serious violations must be thoroughly and independently investigated by the state, 
and the perpetrators must be prosecuted regardless of who they are. Mr. President, to recall what should already be obvious to all of us, humanitarian workers must never be a target. Still last week, three humanitarian colleagues from Médecins Sans Frontières were brutally and deliberately murdered in Tigray. This only weeks after aid workers from the Relief Society of Tigray and the International Committee for the Development of Peoples were killed on 29 May and 28 April, respectively. Twelve humanitarian workers have now been killed since the start of the conflict. Despite the challenges, humanitarian workers continue to work to reach people in desperate need. In the last two months, 3.7 million people have received emergency assistance, 167,000 displaced persons have received non-food items, and 630,000 people have been reached by water trucks. However, it is estimated that over 2.5 million people in rural Tigray have not had access to essential services over the last six months. This includes many of the people facing famine and is also part of the reason that they face famine. The lives of many of these people depend on our ability to reach them with food, medicine, nutrition supplies and other humanitarian assistance. And we need to reach them now, not next week, now. As you have heard us say before, to do, to do so we need timely, unimpeded, safe and sustained access. International humanitarian law requires all parties to a conflict to facilitate this. Uh, let me explain what this looks like and, and be clear about what exactly we are asking for. Over the past few days, our colleagues in Mekele have been able to move towards Abi, uh, Abd Abi, Abi Abd Adi and Samre, and from Shira teams, and, and from Shira teams have reached uh, Selklekla, and have travelled from Aksum to Adwa. This is positive, and we now plan to dispatch convoys with humanitarian supplies to areas, many of the areas which have been difficult to reach for us before. But we can only do so for as long as we have uh, something to deliver. Today, WFP has enough food for only 1 million people for the next month in Mekele. This is a fraction of what we need for the 5.2 million people who need food aid. However, we have also almost run out of health, water, sanitation, and other food item kits. Food alone does not avert a famine. Water, sanitation, and nutrition supplies are essential in such a response. We also desperately need to prevent a cholera outbreak or people dying from other communicable diseases. Mr. President, earlier this week, the government of Ethiopia announced a humanitarian ceasefire. We wholeheartedly welcome this and look forward to its implementation throughout the conflict area. It is imperative that all parties of the conflict, whoever they are and wherever they are, ensure no further escalation in conflict. We cannot afford to fail in this endeavor. The affected populations in Tigray on the brink of starvation deserve no less. All groups must stop fighting to allow humanitarian aid to get through unimpeded and to protect civilians. There is no other way to achieve this. While inside Tigray, we may now be able to reach areas that were difficult to reach before. It is essential we act fast and without further obstruction. What we need first and foremost is for all armed and security actors to provide guarantees for safe road access for humanitarian workers and supplies to and from Tigray, as well as to and from the most remote parts of the region. This means not stopping us from getting through checkpoints, but rapidly letting us proceed in all directions. As we speak here, there are five UNICEF trucks loaded with life-saving water and sanitation supplies blocked in Afar. Earlier this week, a convoy of WFP trucks was prevented from entering Tigray from Gondar. All these trucks must immediately be allowed to proceed. Secondly, we must be allowed to use the fastest and most effective route to get humanitarian supplies to people in need. We need immediate, unhindered, and, and sustained access from both Komolcha and Samara to Mekele and from Gondar to Shire. I'm deeply alarmed by yesterday's destruction of the Tekeze River Bridge and the reported damage to two other bridges, which has cut off our main supply route from Gondar to Shire, which we used to bring in food and other life-saving supplies. Uh, we call on the government of Ethiopia to undertake immediate repairs to these bridges and by doing so help prevent the spread of famine. Third, we must also be able to use the fastest and most effective modality to deliver supplies and transport humanitarian staff. This means we need to be able to fly and I welcome the information received today that the government of Ethiopia has approved our request for an unhasked flight to Mekele tomorrow. Uh, we hope that this is not a one-off, but this, is a, a, this must continue and be extended to all airports in Tigray. 
I also call on all parties to provide security assurances for these humanitarian air operations. Fourth, we need to be able to bring in and use all appropriate communication equipment, such as VSATs, VHF radios, HF radios, satellite phones for humanitarian purposes. These are imperative and critical for the safety and security, you will understand, of humanitarian workers. We use these all over the world. We ask that the government of Ethiopia fast track all requests made by humanitarian organizations. We also call on the government to see to the immediate return of the communications equipment confiscated from the offices of humanitarian organizations uh, by the uh, Europe, Ethiopian National Defense Forces. Trucks commandeered from humanitarian organizations must also be returned by those who have done so. We also urge the government of Ethiopia to rest restore and maintain electricity, communication networks, and banking services in Tigray, uh, without which we cannot effectively reach populations, as well as to allow the free flow of essential commercial goods, including fuel at scale. Without fuel, we cannot transport the food, and, and people will indeed starve. We cannot run water pumps, provide clean water, and prevent cholera, which kills. Hospitals cannot operate, and people will suffer. In short, without fuel, humanitarian operations will not be possible and, and lives will indeed be lost. We have repeatedly said that the only way to stop the humanitarian situation from further deteriorating is peace. Uh, the welcomed announcement, as I mentioned, by the governor of Ethiopia of a ceasefire must be the beginning of this peace for the sake of millions of innocent civilians. Uh, the conflict has already caused enormous suffering to the civilian population. It must stop now. The ceasefire has raised expectation among the population. And we now need to reach people throughout Tigray with humanitarian assistance to prevent a spread of famine and, as I mentioned before, an outbreak of cholera. But humanitarian assistance alone is not enough. We are not the solution. Unless civilians can return to normality and farmers can access their fields, famine will, will take an even tighter grip on Tigray. We welcome the government's announcement today of the formation of a high-level mechanism to solve access problems and challenges in real time and we look forward to working together to make sure we immediately reach people. There can be no reason for the ceasefire to fail and humanitarian convoys to be blocked. We hope this mechanism can be operational within the next 48 hours so as not to lose any more time nor lose any more lives. I conclude this by asking the Council, Mr. President, and all those who, with influence to help us save lives and prevent famine and further suffering by ensuring these fundamental requests are fulfilled. Thank you. I thank Mr. Raja Singham for his briefing. I now give the floor to those council members who wish to make statements. I give the floor now to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. And let me start by thanking our esteemed colleague for Estonia for uh, chairing us last uh, month in such an extraordinarily successful way. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the briefers for your comprehensive briefing on the ongoing crisis in Tigray. The United States deeply appreciates the work you and your teams have done and that you continue to do. I also want to thank my colleagues on the Council for participating in today's open briefing. In recent months, the Council has been briefed and discussed the situation in Tigray privately a half dozen times. We've heard from NGOs and UN agencies about vast displacements, countless human rights abuses, hundreds of thousands of people facing famine, the bombing of civilians, the killing and intimidation of humanitarian workers, the sy systematic rape of women and girls and unspeakable acts of sexual violence, the purposeful obstruction of humanitarian aid, the deliberate destruction of UN communications equipment. Tragically, these stories remain pervasive. As Oja told us recently, tragedies of historic proportions are taking place in Tigray, and that's why we called for this meeting today. It's important for the people of the region to hear our voices and to know they haven't been forgotten, and for the parties to the conflict to know that we are watching. We know that millions of civilians in the region are desperately suffering, and we called for today's briefing because the conflict needs to end. We need to marshal more funding and scale up the UN response. 
we need to ensure respect for international humanitarian law and humanitarian access, and we need public accountability for the atrocities that have been committed. This week, the government unilaterally announced a ceasefire, stating it was doing so for humanitarian purposes. The government must now demonstrate that it truly intends to use the ceasefire to address the humanitarian catastrophe in Tigray. In fact, Ethiopian forces looted the offices of humanitarian aid organizations and destroyed communications equipment as they retreated from Mekele. And this is beyond acceptable. All equipment looted must be returned. We have also since learned that one or two, uh, one or more bridges were destroyed along critical access routes to Tigray. Access by road and by air, which along with electricity, telecoms, banking activity, and fuel supplies are essential to enable aid delivery. These are being denied, and we heard that today from OCHA. Humanitarian workers are reporting that it is more difficult to reach desperate people in Tigray now than it was just a week ago. Such acts, if, if verified, are not an indication of a humanitarian ceasefire, but of a siege. The Ethiopian government can and should prove this analysis wrong by providing unhindered movement of humanitarian supplies, commodities, and personnel into and throughout Tigray. If they do not, we believe hundreds of thousands of people could starve to death. Once again, we need access, we need aid, and we need to end the conflict. Instead of further ex escalation, we need all parties to negotiate a true ceasefire and then to honor that ceasefire. To be clear, this includes the Tigrayan forces, the TDF, which must also demonstrate that they will abide by international humanitarian law and work peacefully and within legal frameworks toward a peaceful solution. And there is more we need to know about the actions of other forces in the region. For the time being, with the government's ceasefire declaration in place, we have a precious opportunity. Now is the time to secure peace, right now. The members of this council can help translate this ceasefire declaration first into a sustainable peace and then into dialogue, reconciliation, and healing. If the parties to the conflict fail to seize this moment, the consequences for the people of Ethiopia will be devastating. More fighting, more famine, more abuses, more suffering by ordinary Ethiopians, and a far more destabilized Horn of Africa. Further fighting poses a risk to the integrity of the Ethiopian state and to the stability of the entire region. A meaningful ceasefire deal would affirm the redeployment of forces and the complete withdrawal of Eritrean troops and Amhara regional forces. It would facilitate unhindered humanitarian access. It would affirm neither the internal nor external borders of Ethiopia will be changed by force and in contravention of the Constitution. And it should lay the groundwork for discussions toward political solutions to the crisis. We must also recognize the wider political context in which this crisis has unfolded. Both last month's national election and the extraordinary transition that began several years ago, but which remains very much unfinished. The United States commends those Ethiopians who exercised their right to vote last month. Elections alone, however, cannot revoke the escalating polarization that has plagued the country. The next step is to move toward genuine political reform. Ethiopians must come together to confront the country's growing divisions and preserve the future of the rich and dynamic society. And, this dialogue, and if this dialogue is to succeed, either in the short term or in breaking long-term cycles of violence, all Ethiopians must be able to call it their own. Equally important will be credible and independent mechanisms for justice and accountability for the atrocities that have been committed. And to that end, we welcome the ongoing investigation by the OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. 
and we strongly support the African Commission on Human and People's Rights Commission of Inquiry as it fully and independently investigates violations, abuses, and atrocities taking place in Ethiopia. This includes last week's senseless killing of three Doctors Without Borders workers, which we condemn in the strongest terms. In recent days, I've been deeply disturbed to hear from NGOs on the ground about other ways their personnel are being deliberately targeted for harassment and violence. This must stop, and accountability of the perpetrators must be done. The United States stands ready to assist Ethiopia in solidifying and implementing a ceasefire, providing life-saving humanitarian aid, and resolving this devastating conflict. We're also standing ready to support the wider necessary dialogue across Ethiopia and toward democratic renewal, national unity, and peace. The Security Council should step up to these tasks as well. We must use this opportunity to protect and save the lives of the people in Tigray as they continue to face famine, displacement, and violence. And we must do everything in our power to bring all Ethiopians together for the future security, stability, prosperity of their country. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the United States for her statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Lord Tariq Ahmad of Wimbledon, Minister of State for the Commonwealth, the United Nations and South Asia, uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I would like to begin by thanking Under Secretary General De Carlo and Acting Under Secretary General Ramesh Rangasingham for their expert insights and briefings today. Today is an important opportunity. It is right that this Security Council considers how to help end this devastating conflict and support all of the people of Ethiopia. I shall not repeat the picture of suffering outlined by our briefers. It is stark, it is real. But after eight months of this conflict, we remain deeply concerned by all that we have heard and that we are seeing. Instead, I want to make three brief points on the immediate humanitarian situation, the need for conflict resolution, and in addressing human rights concerns, so that Ethiopia can move on from this most tragic of conflicts. But before I go any further, I want to pay tribute up front to the 12 humanitarian workers, and I'm sure I speak for every member of this council, who have been killed since this conflict began. Protection of humanitarian workers, of their offices, of their equipment, is a central tenant of international humanitarian law. Their work is especially vital in Tigray, whereas OCHA have outlined today, and as the IPC data shows, at least 353,000 people are now in famine conditions. People have died from hunger. People are dying from hunger. People will continue to die unless they get the help they need and get the help they need now. This is a man-made famine and we need to act. In this regard, the United Kingdom welcomes the unilateral ceasefire declared by the government of Ethiopia. All sides, the federal government of Ethiopia, Tigray Defense Forces, Amhara militias, Eritrean Defense Forces, have an opportunity to end the cycle of violence and suffering. We urge them to take it and we call on Eritrean forces to withdraw as requested by the Ethiopian government. Our immediate priority has to be for humanitarian assistance to get through to those that require it. The restoration of basic infrastructure, including electricity, communications and banking services, and ensuring food and other needed goods can reach Tigray. It is essential to prevent further loss of life. 
enabling humanitarian agencies to get visas for their staff and import communications equipment so they can operate effectively is imperative. Indeed, we've heard that today. Denial of humanitarian access is a direct violation of international humanitarian law. At the same time, we, the international community and UN agencies, must be ready to respond. The response to date has frankly been insufficient. The ceasefire gives us the opportunity to address this and do so urgently, increase the amount of aid reaching the starving people of Tigray, and in this regard, the United Kingdom has already allocated £47.7 million. A full and sustained ceasefire will give all parties time and space to address the root causes of this conflict through both dialogue and, importantly, reconciliation, and for an inclusive political process to be initiated. The United Kingdom welcomes and endorses African Union Commission Chairperson Faki's call for all parties to uphold their responsibilities under international law to protect civilians. He is, of course, right that a comprehensive and all-encompassing permanent ceasefire is absolutely necessary to pave the way for sustainable peace in Tigray. We will support the African Union in its efforts in pursuit of peace and stability in Tigray, Ethiopia and indeed the wider region. And we encourage the United Nations system to consider how it can also assist as the situation develops as part of a very much joined up process and coherent strategy. And finally, Mr. President, Special Representative Patton and High Commissioner Bachelet have highlighted serious allegations of human rights abuses and violations. They also described systematic sexual violence, which, as the United Kingdom's Prime Minister's Special Representative on preventing sexual violence in conflict, I have been particularly moved by. The UK is supporting the ICRC and UN agencies to provide essential services to survivors of sexual violence. And an extra £16.7 million pounds of funds were announced in June, which will support and drive towards accountability. And this week, Mr. President, we have additionally deployed an expert to advise on support for the safe collection. And this is vital. It is imperative for the safe collection and preservation of evidence in order to bring the perpetrators of sexual violence to justice at the appropriate time. The United Kingdom welcomes the proposed inquiry of the African Commission for Human and People's Rights, and it fully supports the ongoing joint investigation between the UN Office for the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. We will also co-sponsor a resolution on Tigray at the Human Rights Council in Geneva this month. Mr. President, transparency and accountability will be vital if Ethiopia is truly to move past this most tragic of conflicts. We collectively owe this to the victims. We owe it to the survivors. Our message is clear. It is time for all sides to put down their weapons. It is time to allow unrestricted access for humanitarian aid. And it is time now to put the interests of Ethiopian people first. I hope this Council can now work constructively with the African Union and partners to ensure progress on these most critical of issues and turn around the situation for the sake of the people of Tigray and for the sake of all Ethiopians. Thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie. I thank His Excellency Lord Tariq Ahmed of Wimbledon for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Ireland. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And Ramesh, for your insightful uh, yet deeply troubling briefings today. Mr. President, Ethiopia is a long-standing and important partner for Ireland. For this reason, the deteriorating crisis in the Tigray region and its severe humanitarian consequences is of genuine and deep concern for us. 
It's a situation which we have consistently raised and sought to have this Council address since we joined the Council in January. The Council's voice matters on this issue. Today, finally, we meet publicly and all Council members have an opportunity to send a clear message to the parties on the ground. This conflict must end. Humanitarian needs must be urgently addressed. We called for today's meeting because it's clear that a humanitarian catastrophe is unfolding in Tigray. It is clear that the threat of famine looms and that hundreds of thousands of people could already be starving. It is clear that without further and immediate scaled up action, many more will die. We all have a responsibility to act immediately to save lives. Indeed, our action is overdue. Mr. President, the prospect of a large-scale famine in Ethiopia today is real. The evidence we have heard today is indisputable. And the consequences of inaction are chilling and all too predictable. As the spectre of a large-scale famine again looms for the people of Ethiopia, the international community is ready to mobilise the necessary response. However, the political steps needed to facilitate that response lie with those who are party to this conflict. Leadership to forge a path towards a political solution is needed. Mr. President, the declaration by the Ethiopian government of a unilateral ceasefire is a welcome step. However, any ceasefire must include actions that serve to improve the humanitarian situation on the ground not create further obstacles to the humanitarian response. Reports that humanitarian access continues to be cut off, including through the destruction of key routes for humanitarian supplies, are deeply worrying and frankly shocking. We urge all parties to the conflict to cease hostilities, to protect civilians and to allow for immediate, unimpeded and safe humanitarian access to all parts of Tigray. We call on the Ethiopian authorities to demonstrate their commitment to the ceasefire, the ceasefire they declared, by immediately facilitating humanitarian access. The next few days are absolutely critical in this regard as the humanitarian response restarts. We also call on the government to establish a functioning civil military coordination mechanism to immediately restore essential services and to reopen airspace for humanitarian deliveries. Tigrayan forces must also refrain from any actions that encourage conflict or restrict humanitarian access. Beyond the food security crisis, we are deeply concerned about the wider humanitarian and human rights situation. Reports last week of the airstrike on the village market of Togoga in northern Tigray, killing and injuring hundreds of civilians, many of them children, are alarming. We call on the Ethiopian authorities to conduct an independent investigation into the incident. Last week's brutal murder of three MSF staff underlines the dangers faced by humanitarians. Humanitarian workers must never be targets. Such outrageous attacks must cease. I pay tribute to the efforts and courage of humanitarian workers in highly dangerous circumstances. We condemn reports that international NGOs and UN vehicles and their equipment have been destroyed or appropriated in violation of international humanitarian law. Humanitarian actors' rights under international humanitarian law need to be respected in accordance with the obligations of all parties to the conflict. We remain horrified by the conflict-related sexual violence and atrocities described by Special Representative Patton. It is clear that systematic abuses are being perpetrated by armed actors in the conflict. This Council has demanded that these and other violations end immediately. We strongly support the work of High Commissioner Bachelet and her office 
and attach great importance to the joint investigation with the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. Accountability must be ensured for all violations of international, humanitarian and human rights law to counter impunity, prevent fur further future violations and provide justice for victims and survivors. Mr President, I began today by saying we have an opportunity to send a clear message to the parties on the ground. Three months ago, Ireland said the same thing behind closed doors and has repeated it since. Today, I believe that the message should be threefold. First, this Council should all urge all parties to the conflict to cease hostilities, to protect civilians and to allow for immediate and safe humanitarian access to all parts of Tigray. We also urge the Ethiopian authorities to demonstrate their commitment to the ceasefire by facilitating unimpeded humanitarian access immediately. Second, all parties to the conflict must fully respect international humanitarian law and human rights law. Sexual violence and atrocities against civilians and humanitarian workers must end. Humanitarians must be allowed to do their job without interference. Finally and crucially, we need all Ethiopian stakeholders to commit to a process of national dialogue that promotes reconciliation and the unity of Ethiopia. Ireland stands ready to support in any way we can. We look forward to seeing today's announcement in this regard followed through followed through on and delivered quickly and in full. Mr President, this is a critical moment for Ethiopia. The world is watching. We urge all parties to recognise and to meet their responsibilities, forging a way forward for all Ethiopians. This Council too must step up and play its part. Thank you. Je remercie. I thank the representative of Ireland for her statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Kenya. Thank you, Mr. President, and allow me to congratulate you on assuming the presidency for the month and thank Estonia for guiding the Council so ably last month. Mr. President, we make this statement united as the African three plus one, namely Kenya, Niger, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Tunisia. We are united in the protection of the peace and security of Africa and the interests of African peoples and states to be upheld in the Security Council. We take note of the briefing by USG Rosemary DiCarlo and acting USG Ramesh, and we also welcome the participation of Ethiopia and thank them for their upcoming update to the Council on the developments since we last met about two weeks ago for an informal interactive dialogue. We have been pained by the suffering that has been experienced by our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia because each life matters and is sacrosanct. We send our condolences to all the families who have lost members to violence including aid workers. We are outraged and saddened by the pain of all the women and girls who have suffered sexual violence. We condemn without reservation the targeting of unarmed civilians. In doing so, we call for all parties with the means to cause harm to seize any attacks or threats to unarmed civilians. We demand that they respect international law including humanitarian principles and the moral codes that are at the core of Africa's cultures and religions. Throughout the last months, when division and violence has been experienced in Tigray, we have argued for expanded and robust humanitarian access. We have welcomed the government's resourcing of a significant proportion of the humanitarian needs in Tigray. We have urged the international humanitarian community to move with speed and scale up assistance. We have applauded it and also been disappointed by the continuing shortfalls in its, in its response. We call again for all states, international institutions, organizations and individuals of goodwill 
to redouble their efforts in Tigray. We support the democratic aspirations of the Ethiopian people. As such, we have argued that the international community and the Security Council give the country space to undertake its most recent elections. We have been gratified by the interim reports, especially that of the African Union Election Observer Mission, asserting that, and I quote, despite some operational, logistical, security, political, and COVID-19 related challenges, overall, the pre-election and election day processes were conducted in an orderly, peaceful, and credible manner. Close of quote. We hope that the election becomes a foundation of a robust national conversation on peace, cohesion, development, and the celebration of diversity and pluralism. Today, the situation in Tigray remains of concern, but there are clear opportunities for peace to emerge. Behind closed doors, we have urged this council to take careful and responsible actions that will encourage humanitarian outreach to suffering people and not to imperil the situation in Tigray. We again reiterate this strong and sincere call. We welcome the unilateral humanitarian ceasefire by the government of Ethiopia and stress that this council and the international community should appreciate this decision by the government as an opportunity that must be capitalized on. We hope that it can be translated into a permanent, comprehensive and lasting ceasefire in order to extend humanitarian care to every man, woman and child who needs it in every part of Tigray. That ceasefire must be heeded and implemented. We are particularly concerned about the potential implications of the recent destruction of the bridge over the Tekezi River connecting Shire and Gonda. It is indicative of a callous attitude to the needs of civilians in crisis and that there are parties not observing a ceasefire. We condemn the deliberate destruction of civilian objects that are vital to the delivery of humanitarian aid. These actions must be halted if we are truly to implement the silencing of the guns which Africans have set out in our agenda 2063 to work as a region on ending all wars, civil conflicts, gender-based violence, violent conflicts, and preventing genocide. We now call for all armed parties presently in Tigray or neighboring it to heed the voice of Africa that calls for the silencing of the guns. We call on all parties that have not pronounced on the cessation of hostility, hostilities to do so without delay and to act accordingly by seizing all armed operations. They should allow full humanitarian access to every part of Tigray. We further call for the withdrawal of any and all non-Ethiopian forces from Tigray and the standing down of all militias from neighboring federal states. This silencing of the guns serves con our continental will and would allow Tigray's farmers and traders to return to their farms and shops so that they may recover their livelihoods and reduce their dependency on the outstretched hand of the humanitarians. We insist on ceasefire by all parties because we know from experience that doing so will allow the deployment of the tools available in Africa's peace and security architecture to help Ethiopia be at peace with itself. The people and the government of Ethiopia appreciate the power of the instruments of dialogue and reconciliation forged by Africans these past few decades. After all, most of the agreements that built our peace and security architecture were forged in Addis Ababa by our heads of state and government with Ethiopia's constructive involvement. We now recommend its tools to Ethiopia to make use of them, as many of us have done. Doing so will show our peoples and the world that we have processes and skills that can indeed deliver African solutions to African challenges. The A3 plus one therefore calls for all Ethiopian parties in conflict in Tigray to cease hostilities and undertake inclusive dialogue as a path to national reconciliation. In our view, dialogue is strength. 
and it is at the core of the African identity. Embrace it and save the precious lives of the people of Tigray to protect your national peace and once again be an anchor of regional security. As we have done in closed sessions, we reiterate once again that the Council should always listen to Africa when it comes to African issues. The Council should also allow the continent the space to resolve its challenges with the support of the international community. We do not make this assertion because we are infallible. Rather, it is because Africa today has a realizable vision of itself growing into a peaceful, united, independent, and prosperous community of nations. We suffer the most from our challenges and gain the most from solving them. It is therefore critical that the Security Council as a whole and its members understand that this debate should encourage and support African solutions, meaning in this instance, Ethiopian solutions starting in the order of ceasefire, humanitarian delivery, dialogue, reconciliation, and responsibility. Among the tools Africa has built is the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. We note the launching of a commission of inquiry on Tigray launched on the 17th of June this year. We look forward to its thorough investigations that will allow for accountability against perpetrators of atrocities. We look forward to its findings supporting the cause of the Ethiopian people, establishing the truth of what has happened in Tigray, and using that truth to build a stronger Ethiopia. We as Africa will not agree now or in future for this debate to be turned into a platform that undermines the people and state of Ethiopia. Now is the time for careful diplomacy, the rapid scale-up of humanitarian response, prioritizing people, appreciation of regional stability, and the curbing of misinformation and disinformation. We recall the heights of greatness the civilization of Ethiopia, like others in Africa, has achieved. We know that disruptions and destructions have occurred in our history. We suffer our challenges today, as Ethiopia is presently doing, but our spiritual yearning for reconciliation and unity is unquenchable. In saying that, we, the A3 plus one, conclude by reaffirming our respect for and commitment to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. We stand in solidarity with the government and the people of Ethiopia at this defining moment in their pursuit of sustainable peace that is conducive to nation building and prosperity. Thank you. Je remercie. I thank the representative of Kenya for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Mexico. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Since this is the first meeting under the French presidency, I would like to express to you the full support of Mexico during this month of work. We'd also like to thank Estonia for all of their work during their presidency last month. We'd also like to thank the presidency for having organized this meeting this afternoon and we thank the Under Secretary General Di Carlo and Acting Under Secretary General Rajasingham for their briefings. And we also welcome the Minister of State, Lord Tarek Ahmed of Wimbledon, Minister of State for the Commonwealth, the United Nations and South Asia, and also the representative of Ethiopia. After eight months of clashes, the situation in Tigray is very complex. The humanitarian situation is a source of grave concern. The conflict, as we've heard, has led to thousands of deaths, displacing millions, forcing thousands to flee, some of them towards Sudan, increasing the pressure on a country which is already going through its own delicate phase of transition. Tigray and other parts of Ethiopia have been affected by the triple threat of climate events, the locust storms, and COVID-19. The conflict is bringing us to a turning point. 
the continuation of hostilities would lead to a second interruption of the harvest season and the persistence of hindrances for humanitarian access would considerably increase the probability of a generalized famine. The weakened infrastructure of hospitals is running the risk of collapsing, increasing the danger of there being a spread of transmissible and preventable diseases. The ethnic and intra-community tensions could be exacerbated and the conflict could become extended not only to other parts of Ethiopia but also to the other parts of the Horn of Africa. Mr. President, Mexico is concerned and we condemn as a country all attacks against civilians and humanitarian staff. The attacks in Togoga, which led to tens of civilian deaths and more than 180 wounded, as well as against uh, staff of Médecins Sans Frontières, are simply unacceptable. And also the reports that access is being denied to medical staff who are providing medical assistance to the injured. Let's be clear about this. This represents an unacceptable violation of international humanitarian law. It's as simple as that. Bearing in mind the multiple needs that there are on the ground, it is particularly outrageous that those that have the role of helping the population are they themselves the target of attacks, including um, the, entering into uh, offices of the United Nations and confiscating telecoms equipment. That's why it's fundamental that there be accountability for what has happened in the context of the conflict, and particularly with regard to the multiple allegations of violations of international humanitarian law and human rights. An urgent, impartial and independent investigation is crucial in order to clarify the facts and to provide justice. Mr. President, Mexico welcomes the announcement on the 28th of June of the government of Ethiopia of a humanitarian ceasefire in Tigray and calls upon all the other parties to the conflict to cease any kind of hostility to ensure humanitarian access that is unlimited, irrespective of ethnic origin or political affiliations to abstain from obstructing or damaging critical infrastructure such as communication services, bridges and roads, which would have the consequence of isolating the area and undermining supply lines. Mexico, my country, calls for a withdrawal of the Eritrean forces from Ethiopia. The parties to the conflict must think about the consequences of their actions over the last months and recognize that there is no military solution to the conflict. Mexico calls upon all the parties to seek a solution through dialogue, beginning with a process of national reconstruction and reconciliation. Finally, it is essential to ensure ongoing regional and sub-regional involvement and mediation, as well as the support of the Security Council for all actions which lead to a political dialogue. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Mexico for her statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of China. Mr. President, first I like to congratulate France on assuming the presidency of Council of this month, uh, a month, and I'd like to thank Ethiopia, uh, for, uh, Estonia for successfully presiding over the, this Council last month. I thank USG Carlo and Acting USG Rajasingham for their briefings. I welcome the presence at this meeting of the Ethiopian PR Ambassador Taye Aske Salasi Amde. Ethiopia is an anchor, an anchor of stability in the Horn of Africa, vital to regional peace and security. A peaceful and stable Ethiopia is the, is the common wish of all Ethiopians and other African countries and the international community at large would want nothing less. China has been closely following with concern the situation in the Tigray region. The government of Ethiopia has recently announced a unilateral ceasefire in the state of Tigray to restore normalcy in farming and humanitarian operations in the region, which China welcomes. We look forward to a comprehensive ceasefire in Tigray and support the parties concerned to resolve their differences through political dialogue so that all people in Ethiopia 
including those in the state of Tigray, can enjoy peace and stability on their way towards development and prosperity. China supports the AU's continued constructive role and welcomes the assistance extended to Ethiopia by AU Commission Chairperson Faki. For some time now, the government of Ethiopia has been actively responding to the humanitarian needs in Tigray, offering relief to the population in distress, reopening local economy, economy, getting life back to normal, and providing full humanitarian access with positive results. Humanitarian operations in Tigray are dogged by dire shortages of resources, which makes it imperative for the international community to scale up its emergency humanitarian assistance. In this process, the UN humanitarian principles must be fully respected. The Chinese government's food aid will be arriving in short order, and COVID-19 vaccines donated by China to Ethiopia also benefit the Tigrayans. China appreciates the tremendous amount of work done by international humanitarian agencies to alleviate the plight of the local population, strongly condemns the attacks targeting humanitarian workers, and notes that the government of Ethiopia has launched an investigation into these attacks. Right now, Ethiopia's effort to keep peace and development on track is still being challenged in many ways. China is also closely following the developments in Tigray. However, the Tigrayan issue is, by and large, an internal affair of Ethiopia, and we believe in the wisdom and ability of the Ethiopian people to find a proper solution. The international community, while providing assistance, must fully respect the sovereignty and leadership of Ethiopia, as the purpose of such assistance is to work together to help the country overcome its difficulties and maintain peace and stability both in Ethiopia and in the region. When dealing with this issue, the Security Council should carefully and prudently calibrate the timing and the approach taken to make sure that whatever this council does will contribute to improving the situation in Tigray rather than the opposite. China stands ready to work with the rest of the international community to this end. I thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie. I thank the representative of China for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Estonia. I thank Under Secretary General Di Carlo and Acting Under Secretary General Raja Singham <coughs> for their briefings. I welcome the timely holding of the first Open Council meeting on the situation in Tigray. The declaration of ceasefire by the Ethiopian government is a welcome first step towards the resolution of the conflict in Tigray. It is essential that it will be followed by immediate cessation of hostilities and that all parties adhere to the international humanitarian law and international human rights law. Urgent, safe and unhindered humanitarian access is needed and essential services like electricity and telecommunications must be restored to enable humanitarian workers to provide help. <coughs> the food insecurity in Tigray is deteriorating each day, and some regions are already facing famine. Food aid must be allowed to be delivered to those in need without any delay. For a sustainable solution to the food insecurity, immediate cessation of hostilities is vital for allowing the farmers to plant crops. We condemn violence against the humanitarian workers and their assets as this is against the international humanitarian law. The brutal killings of three representatives of Médecins Sans Frontières must be investigated immediately and the perpetrators brought to justice. There is also no justification to the illegal entering into the premises of humanitarian agencies and dismantling their communications equipment. We are worried that the situation in Tigray continues to be volatile and the civilians are bearing the brunt of the conflict. It was reminded again last week when an airstrike near Mekele killed around 80 civilians and injured around 200. Targeting of civilians and blocking medical aid is completely unacceptable. We call for an urgent and independent investigation into the incident. 
The reports of continued violent, uh, violations and abuses of international humanitarian law and international human rights law, including widespread sexual and gender-based violence, are deeply worrying. The commitment of the government of Ethiopia to engage with the UN mechanisms on investigating <coughs> alleged violations and abuses is welcome. We urge all parties to ensure unfettered access for the investigators. We are concerned about numerous violations committed by the Eritrean troops and call for their immediate withdrawal. The clearly destabilizing role of Eritrean troops, including by obstructing humanitarian aid, has been widely reported. It is important that the end of fighting will not be temporary, but will be followed by a comprehensive, inclusive and credible political process with the aim of national reconciliation. Finally, it is clear that the ongoing conflict in Tigray constitutes a threat to international peace and security, which is, which is why it is vital that the issue remains a priority in the Council's agenda. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. I thank the representative of Estonia for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of India. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Under Secretary General Rosemary Di Carlo and Acting Under Secretary General Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator Ramesh Rajasingham for their briefings on the recent developments in Tigray region in Ethiopia. I also welcome the presence of His Excellency Lord Tariq Ahmed of Wimbledon and the permanent representative of Ethiopia at this meeting. The people of Tigray region in Ethiopia have suffered during the eight month long fighting. The announcement of a humanitarian ceasefire in the Tigray region is therefore a welcome development. We commend the government of Ethiopia for taking this decision and welcome the measures it has taken to address the humanitarian situation. This positive step should help ease the tensions and sufferings of the people. We hope that today's meeting will help in de-escalating the situation on the ground and bring about reconciliation and peace in the region. We also believe that the presence of external armed actors in the Tigray region militate against return to peace and we call for an end to this. It is important that all stakeholders respect the ceasefire, allow humanitarian aid to reach all those in need and allow for regular farming activities to take place. This ceasefire period must be used for scaling up humanitarian aid immediately, which must reach those areas where access has been difficult due to the violence. We continue to urge all humanitarian agencies and the authorities to scale up and coordinate to bridge the gaps on the ground, especially since there has been a cumulative set of factors which has made the situation worse. We appreciate the fact that the Ethiopian authorities have not only been providing humanitarian assistance, but have also granted humanitarian access to a majority of areas under stress and encourage it to continue on that path. We also underscore the importance of adhering to the UN guiding principles of humanitarian assistance, and we also call for protecting all humanitarian workers. India calls for restraint and engagement by all stakeholders in a spirit of dialogue and reconciliation. We urge that the space provided by this humanitarian ceasefire be used to open channels of communication, pursue dialogue and find a peaceful and sustainable solution. All stakeholders must desist from rhetoric and threats, spreading dis misinformation and raising tensions during the ceasefire. Instead, steps must be taken by all stakeholders to disengage and reduce tensions and work towards restoration of normalcy in the lives of people in the affected region. We call on the e Ethiopian government to sustain the ceasefire and find a way to address this conflict in a manner that serves the interests of all its people in line with the federal constitutional provisions. We also encourage the government of Ethiopia to follow up on their commitments to investigate all allegations of human rights violations and to persist in efforts to hold the perpetrators to account in accordance with the law. We look forward to an early conclusion of the investigation by the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and the UN OHCHR. In conclusion, Mr. President, India reiterates its strong commitment
to the unity, sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. Thank you. Je remercie. I thank the representative of India for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, President. First of all, foremost, I would like to congratulate France on assuming the presidency of the Security Council for July and wish you every success. And also thank Estonia for the successful presidency uh, June this year. We very carefully listened to the briefings on the situation in Tigray from USG De Carlo and acting USG for Humanitarian Affairs Ramesh Rajasingham. We also welcome the personal participation of uh, participation of the permanent representative to the UN of Ethiopia, Tahir Selassie. President, first of all, I would like to express our regret as to the format of today's meeting and caution our colleagues against using it to further destabilise an already complex situation in Tigray and weakening the, the political position of the federal authorities there. We believe the problem today, in one way or another, is an internal affair of Ethiopia, and we shouldn't forget about that. We are closely following the development of the complex situation, and we believe that the Ethiopian federal government's unilateral decision on the 28th of June uh, for a cessa immediate cessation of facilities in Tigray is a step in the right direction. We hope that all warring parties will demonstrate the necessary political will, which would enable to put an end to this bloodshed and improve the humanitarian situation and gradually bring about social economic stabilization and allow us to allow crops to be planted and IDPs to return home. We call on all partners of Addis Ababa to support steps taken by the Ethiopian government for a return to peace for the region and for life to return to normal. We also believe that in addressing this domestic Ethiopian conflict, a, there is a decisive role to be played by Ethiopians themselves with assistance first and foremost from the African community. The new turn of events in the region should not distract from addressing the ongoing serious socio-economic problems in Tigray. In recent months, the Ethiopian government has made a substantial contribution to rebuilding destroyed infrastructure and meeting humanitarian needs in the region. On data that we have available to us, they have spent more than $2.5 billion on this. We call on OCHA and humanitarian agencies working in the region to continue to accompany these efforts fully in line with UN General Assembly Resolution 46182 and fully complying with the guiding principles of humanitarian assistance. We expect the humanitarian community to draw up an objective picture of the humanitarian situation and define the real requirements of the people in the region. We are aware that a group of Western countries submitted a draft resolution to the 47th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva on the situa human rights situation in Tigray, which, as we see it, has a, an accusatory slant towards the Ethiopian's leadership. We share the concerns of, about human rights problems caused by the conflict in Tigray, and we, we believe that the aim of adopting such a document is not to accuse and punish, but to try and tackle and present and prevent rather human rights violations, whoever commits them. In conclusion, we'd like to reaffirm the Russian Federation's readiness to continue to support normalizing the situation in Tigray. We believe it is unacceptable to politicize this problem. The situation in Tigray must remain a domestic issue of Ethiopia, and we believe that interference by the Security Council in solving it is counterproductive. Thank you for your, thank you. Je remercie. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Vietnam. I thank you, Mr. President, and I congratulate you to presuming the presidency of this month. I thank Estonia for excellent presidency last month. I would like to thank uh, USG Rosemary Gallo and acting USG Rasmer Rasingham for their insightful briefing. I welcome Minister of State of the United Kingdom, and Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Ethiopia to our meeting today. Mr. President, the situation in the Tigray region of Ethiopia over the last month had witnessed complicated development. It had resulted in multi-faceted hardship for millions of people. 
which are concerns of international community, including those expressed by the Secretary General about the alarming level of violence and killings against civilians, including women, children, and humanitarian workers, as well as destruction of infrastructures indispensable to civilian population in Tigray. These acts of violence are totally unacceptable and turn and run counter to international humanitarian law. We call for immediate cessation of hostility, upholding responsibility under international humanitarian law and ensuring the protection of civilians, especially women and children, with a view to so addressing the mounting difficulties that the people have to face after months of hostility. Mr. President, the ongoing humanitarian situation in Tigray is of much concern. We welcome the effort by the government of Ethiopia in order to help alleviate the uh, above-mentioned difficulties. The conflict is resulting in other systemic issues that may lead to further deterioration, especially the high risk of famine. famine. Children are suffer the most. UNICEF projects that 56,000 children under the age of five in Tigray will need uh, treatment this year for severe acute malnutrition. 30,000, 33,000 children in, in uh, accessible part of Tigray will face imminent death unless they are given immediate help. In the face of such dangers, we call on all parties to fulfill their obligation under humanitarian law to prevent the famine from occurring. It is important now to ensure safe, effective, and efficient delivery of and access to humanitarian assistance in the Tigray region and bordering area. In this process, this assessment are delivery and delivery of humanitarian assistance should be taken into account local particularities and in consultation with the government of Ethiopia. Mr. President, while responding to humanitarian need is one urgent task, it is equally important to earnestly strive for the peaceful solution of differences among parties concerned. The current uh, crisis stems from the complicated political, historical, and ethnic reasons. And this background requires relevant parties to patiently engage in dialogue and reconciliation rather than further hatred. It is high time for a compromise to be made toward a comprehensive solution for sustained stability and development in Ethiopia on the basis of principle of international law and the UN Charter. We call on Ethiopian authority and on other concerned parties to give the highest priority to the interest of its people. In this process, the international community, including the Security Council, should support all effort toward this end in full respect of independent sovereignty, unity, and territorial integrity of Ethiopia. And in this connection, we welcome the recent ceasefire declaration by the government of Ethiopia and expect all parties to make it a long-term and comprehensive one. Furthermore, we call on all parties concerned to take advantage, advantage of this opportunity to engage in constructive dialogue and refrain from further bloodshed and confrontational rhetoric that may drive each other further apart. And we believe that it is the only way, viral part, for finding a common ground and a peaceful way out of the current crisis in Ethiopia. Mr. President, the conflict and situation in Tigray have had certain impact on the region that require relevant parties to exercise self restraint. And under these circumstances, the principle of non interference in international, international affairs of state and settlement dispute by peaceful means should always be upheld. And it did, in this connection, we support the constructive engagement of neighboring country and international organization, especially AEU and EGAD, in supporting the party concerned to promote dialogue, build trust, and provide humanitarian assistance for Ethiopia so as to help its people return to normal life. The efforts so far by various humanitarian agencies, including those of the UN, are highly commendable. We call on international community to continue to support the Ethiopian people in their pursuits for peace, reconciliation, and reconstruction of their own countries. I thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie. I thank the representative of Vietnam for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Norway. Thank you, President, and thank you to the briefers. Eight months of armed conflict in Tigray, the situation remains critical and highly unpredictable. Humanitarian needs are overwhelming. 
up to 900,000 people are likely suffering from near famine conditions, with millions more at risk. Critical aid is being blocked and humanitarians are prevented from saving lives. The current situation is extremely fluid and information is difficult to obtain. President, in my intervention today, I would like to address four key points. First, we reiterate and emphasize our call for unrestric unrestricted and unconditional humanitarian access into and within all parts of Tigray. We welcome the federal government's declaration of a unilateral ceasefire on humanitarian grounds and call on all parties to move towards a permanent ceasefire. However, despite this positive step, we have received credible reports from several border crossings that humanitarian actors are still being denied access. Let me be clear, the, pri primary, the primary responsibility of the protection of, of citizens rests with the state. The central government of Ethiopia must ensure humanitarian access into Tigray. Humanitarian actors must immediately be allowed to cross the front lines with personnel and supplies. And the restoration of basic infrastructure electricity, banking, telecommunication, access to fuel and internet are all critical to scale up the humanitarian response. All parties must also comply with their obligations under international humanitarian law. They must respect the protected status of aid workers and civilians and refrain from unacceptable destruction or removal of objects that are indispensable to the survival of the population. Second, impunity cannot be tolerated. We condemn in the strongest term the reported killings of civilians and the widespread and systematic acts of sexual and gender-based violence. All violations and abuses of human rights and violations of international humanitarian law should be documented and verified with a view to fu future investigation and prosecution of those responsible. Accountability for crimes and gross violations, including individual accountability under criminal law, must be ensured. This will be key to reinstate public trust in justice and security institution and lay the foundation for reconciliation and sustainable peace. In this respect, we welcome the joint investigation by OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission as well as the African Commission on Human and People's Rights Independent Commission of Inquiry into alleged atrocities in Tigray. We expect all, that all findings will be used to ensure accountability. My third point, President, is that the conflict in Tigray threatens regional stability. We call on neighboring states to refrain from aggravating the situation. The continued presence of Eritrean troops in Tigray is a threat to regional peace and security and must end. We call for their immediate withdrawal. And fourth, the conflict in Tigray cannot be resolved by military means. The recent elections in Ethiopia have taken place in very challenging conditions. But, as we can see in this situation, election alone cannot bring democratic transition or resolve the political challenges currently being faced. A meaningful, inclusive national dialogue is needed to enable Ethiopia's democratic development and to reduce conflict across the country. In Tigray, we strongly urge all actors to work across divides and prepare the ground for a possible dialogue. A political solution is the only way to a sustainable peace in Tigray and Ethiopia as a whole. Thank you. Je remercie la représentante de la Norvège. I thank the representative of Norway for her statement, and I will now deliver a statement in my capacity as representative of France. I'd like to thank Madame Di Carlo and Mr. Rajasingham for their briefings, and I would like to stress four points. After eight months of conflict, the retaking of Mekali by Tigray forces shows that there will be no military solution to the crisis. The announcement of a ceasefire could be a major development if it is rapidly consolidated. We call upon all parties to act responsibly by expressing without delay their commitment to a definitive cessation of hostilities. 
and also an end to all forms of vi uh, violence against the population. The Eritrean forces must immediately leave er Ethiopian territory in accordance with the request formulated by the Ethiopian authorities last March. We take note of the information regarding the redeployment of the forces towards the border, which must be quickly verified. Secondly, it is a matter of urgency to ensure safe and unhindered hum humanitarian access. There are immense humanitarian needs and electricity must be restored as well as communications and banking services. We call for a lifting of all barriers, particularly by the reopening of the Mekali Airport, the granting of long-term visas to humanitarian workers and the authorization of satellite communications. Vital infrastructure for providing aid to the population must be preserved. France renews its condemnation of the deadly attacks that struck the workers of Médecins Sans Frontières. At least 12 workers have lost their lives since the beginning of the conflict. These crimes must not go unpunished. The protection of humanitarian and medical staff is an obligation that applies to all the parties. The preservation of the unity and territorial integrity of Ethiopia is a priority. That's my third point. The launching of a national dialogue, including representatives of all parties and all regions, must contribute to this. We call upon the, all of the political and military forces in Ethiopia to abstain from any action which could add to the instability. Reconciliation also means fighting impunity. It is imperative that the investigation into serious violations of human rights committed in Tigray continue, led jointly by the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. It is important that credible investigations are carried out in full transparency. And finally, France is concerned at the impact of the crisis on regional stability. We call upon countries in the region to resolve their differences through dialogue and to respond constructively to the media mediation efforts of the African Union. I thank you. I now resume my functions as President of the Council, and now I give the floor to the representative of Ethiopia. Mr. President, let me begin by congratulating you for assuming the presidency of the Security Council for the month. I assure you of my delegation's full support. Mr. President, my country, Ethiopia, is undergoing a significant transformation that requires delicate and context-driven handling of its domestic affairs. In our bilateral meetings with members of the Council and the informal dialogue we had last month, we have exchanged views and concerns, all of which the government of Ethiopia approached and acted upon in a constructive manner. This being said, Mr. President, I'm surprised by the rationales of calling for this open meeting. We are fully cognizant of the responsibility of this Council to work towards international peace and security. The very first requisite for this onerous responsibility is to encourage dialogue and prevent escalation through constructive engagement and reinforcement of achievements. This meeting is called at a time when the government of Ethiopia took bold measures and political decision to meet the needs and well-being of, of its people affected by the law enforcement operation in Tigray. This measure should have encouraged our friends to give support and de-escalate the unhelpful pressure. Equally, we wish to express our appreciation to all of you for recognizing our resolve for peace behind this difficult initiative we have taken. Mr. President, since the Council held the informal interactive dialogue on the humanitarian situation in Ethiopia, there are critical developments that deserve your recognition and constructive outlook. On 28 June 2021, the government of Ethiopia decided to cease the activity, the active military engagement of the Ethiopian National Defense Forces in the Tigray region. This decision for humanitarian ceasefire was reached after a concerted deliberation 
with various stakeholders and partners. We hope that this magnanimous and far-sighted decision will not be wasted by the irresponsible conduct of the TPLF group, which the government of Ethiopia opted to tolerate for the sake of the people of Tigray and to elevate the humanitarian situation in the region. The decision to cease military operation is hoped to create a conducive environment for humanitarian operation in Tigray. It will also pave the way for an inclusive national dialogue. The TPLF group that were pursuing continued it is belligerence to protect few individuals in furtherance of its agenda, it began conscripting young and elder, elderly civilians, women and men, to fight highly trained and armed men of their country. This exposed the people in Tigray for the military confrontation that are not prepared for. Furthermore, it posed a risk for disruption to the agricultural season. The group's ethnically charged tactic of vying the people against the government is also found to be determinantal to our innate social fabric. As a result, the government of Ethiopia, at the bearer of their primary responsibility to protect its people, made a difficult political decision to suspend active military operation in favor of safeguarding the unity, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of the Ethiopian state. Now we believe we have created a space for unfettered humanitarian assistance and proper conduct for the agricultural planting season. In addition, we will augment humanitarian efforts in the region, including distribution of food and non-food items from warehouses across Tigray. The National Disaster Risk Management Commission and the five humanitarian agencies deployed in all waradas of the region are set to resume their function. Furthermore, we are in the process of adapting the humanitarian assistance guideline and coordination mechanism to the new development. Public services will also resume once we create a situation for the safe operation of the infrastructure and their operators. Mr. President, Ethiopia faces the inevitable journey of addressing the political and structural underpinnings of what we had experienced last November when our defense forces were attacked from within. The immediate need lies in creating an environment for the delivery of much needed humanitarian assistance. In this regard, the government will continue to exert maximum effort and allocate the available resource towards this end. We welcome and appreciate the concern expressed by the council members of, for our compatriots in Tigray who have regrettably sustained the burden of the impact of the law enforcement operation due to the cowardly tactics of the TPLF group. It is important to underline that wounds and sufferings of all Ethiopians are unacceptable. The shortcomings in preventing these sufferings are not something the government belittles. In the same vein, we, took, we take our responsibility to ensure accountability and remedy these problems with maximum seriousness. For absolute clarity, I would like to reaffirm my government's firm commitment to these core responsibilities of the state. There certainly are internal as well as external factors that play into the security challenges we are facing. The external security threats against us through no fault of or provocation on our part are complicating our internal political dynamics and distract us from key national priorities. I wish to implore this council to act with full awareness of this external challenge Ethiopia is facing. Mr. President, following the organization of peaceful and successful national elections this month, efforts are now geared towards building a stronger, united, and democratic country. In this connection, the Ethiopian government is developing a roadmap for inclusive dialogue to ensure a lasting peace and stability. I want to reaffirm my government's resolve to continue ensuring accountability for human rights abuse and crimes committed in the Tigray region. We will make sure that impunity is not tolerated. We remain committed to work with all bilateral and multilateral partners through genuine partnership 
and understanding that the government of Ethiopia is more than capable of overcoming these challenges. We encourage council members to play a constructive role in supporting the Ethiopian government in the implementation of the humanitarian ceasefire. We thank council members who have welcomed this positive gesture again. In contrast, I would like to make it clear that the political pressure and hasty bilateral coercive measures against Ethiopia are unacceptable and violate basic tenets of international law. Excessive pressures will put this ancient country of 110 million people to the precipice and deep riven with no possibility of recovery. The people of Ethiopia are indeed watching and should not perceive that our pronouncement is pushing them to the abyss and into the endless political fissure. For Ethiopia, it is a moment of introspection, a genuine revisit of our success and challenges. The main issue that how to, is how to heal our wounds. There are uncompleted griefings, mournings, such as the Maikadra massacre by the TPA refuse group, the suffering of the people of Wolkait and Tagade, who have been evicted from their ancestral land over the last 30 years. So there needs to be proper closure. The political culture of impunity should have closure. Was, we know that what exalts us as a nation is to overcome our own challenges. What would elevate us as a nation is our commitment and the commitment of our people to stand for peace. We might be poor, but we have also hope. We are people, of, people with values, cherished ones. For Ethiopia, hope is still alive. In conclusion, I hope council members will take uh, the situation in my country in the right perspective, understand the magnitude of the challenges we face, and also recognize the important step that we have taken in this regard. What we really need at the moment is the support, understanding, and solidarity of the international community. That's why I want to end by appealing to international partners and friends of our country to continue scaling up humanitarian support to meet humanitarian needs across Ethiopia. I thank Mr. President. Je remercie. I thank the representative of Ethiopia for his statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.